Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. So today we have a reaction video. So you have been tagging me everywhere on everything, which I absolutely love. You can tag me on TikTok at Robert Welsh MUA, um, Instagram at Robert WLSH, and I think that's pretty much it. Just before we jump into reactions, if this is your first time here, hi, my name is Robert. I'm a professional makeup artist here on YouTube and also in real life. And it's my goal to help you become a pro yourself or just someone who's really good at being it. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, then do please consider subscribing. And also, as I always like to say in my reaction videos, there are no rules to individuality and creativity, but makeup most definitely has a theory. Okay, let's take a look at some of whatever you've been tagging me in. Okay, let's start with TikTok, shall we? What have you been tagging me in this week? Here's a fun eyeshadow technique. No brushes needed. Starting off with the middle finger, I'm going to use the color closest to my skin tone all over the eyelid. This is called your base color. If it's slightly lighter or slightly darker, that's okay. Next up, we're going to go with the darker tone. I'm going to use my pinky with this one. Point that pinky towards the end of your brow tail and keep it right in the corner. Make sure you're not on your brow bone. As you can see, I'm tapping and I'm not rubbing. Check out your process. All right, now ladies, pull out that ring finger. Tap it into some gold and tap it right in the center of your eye. Final step, we're going to go on with our pointing finger with the more champagne tone right in the front of your eye. Make sure you're tapping carefully. Done. What a great technique. This reminds me of, I always remember when I watched um, a makeup artist who I was very lucky to be able to watch do makeup and he got um, a brush and did a whole smoky eye with three colors and just like free movements, but it looked like something I would take like 15 minutes to do. This is such a great technique. We always forget our fingers are such a good tool. I don't know a lot a lot of the times I get tagged in people doing things with their fingers because people are like, <laughs> they're using their fingers, but it's a good tool. It's fine to do your makeup with your hands, your foundation with your hands. This is a really great technique because blocking those colors from dark to like your medium or shimmer to a light is something so simple, but so good in terms of depth of color. And when we do an eye like that, that's what we do anyway, right? We stack our colors next to each other, or we blend or we blend them all in together. That's such a quick and simple, easy way to do it. And sometimes it's easier to use your fingers for things because you can feel what you are doing if you really want to buff it out and of course a brush but with a brush sometimes you can't quite feel what you're doing whereas with your fingers you can quite literally feel it i'm just going to change this gloss because it's white but it keeps gathering and it looks like i'm foaming i feel like your makeup always looks like this no matter what you do just dry and cakey and not laying on the skin the way that you want it to i'm going to show you guys the makeup artist trick to fix this and leave your foundation looking like real skin so i've been a model for over a decade so i've had a lot of makeup artists do my makeup and it's all about the no makeup makeup look on set and the way to get your makeup to look like skin has nothing to do with primers but it has everything to do with skincare prep right here is my little secret to makeup prep. This is the triple peptide cactus oasis serum from youth to the peeps. Make sure that your skin is nice and damp first so those homeactants can do their jail. Not only is this going to leave your skin looking super juicy, magical, and hydrated underneath your makeup, no desert skin this summer, but it's also going to help your skin with long-term use because this includes peptides, hyaluronic acid, as well as cactus stem to help support your barrier and keep your skin super healthy and happy. Proof is in the finished product. Look at the skin. It's giving glow, it's giving dew, it's giving dumplings. Trust me when I tell you, once you start prepping your skin with the Oasis Serum from Youth to the People, you are not gonna look back. Oh, that was an advert for that serum. <laughs> but that is, a, it's a great point. When you're doing things like um, no makeup makeup, which is actually a trend right now anyway, but that's all people are doing most of the time on runway. It does involve a lot of skin prep because there's a lot of things you can do with makeup, but at the same time, like, it's just better to prep the skin. Models are lucky because they usually have like great skin. Do wait a few minutes before you put in your foundation. Let the skincare do what it needs to do because your skincare is going to break down a foundation if you go too fast. But exactly what they said. Exactly that. Skin prep is so important. And I think when people think about um, keeping your foundation on and making sure it lasts a long time, they think powder, they think setting spray, they think more, more, more. Start less makeup. L less makeup there is, the less there is to ruin. But if you prep your skin, you're gonna have like a nice, a nice um, base for your foundation. One talent that I have that is probably the worst advice to give you guys is I can sleep in full makeup and I could sleep like this and never ruin my makeup. So sometimes you'll see if I have to get up really early in the morning, I'll do my makeup the night before and have it done. 
sleep, not move, and wear it the whole next day. And you would never know. My makeup lasts a really long time on my face. I, I don't know why. Okay, so usually I would say don't sleep in, we all know you don't sleep in your makeup, but if you're someone like Kim Kardashian, who's probably gonna get four hours sleep or five hours sleep, what's the problem if you're just gonna get up the next day and need to look amazing? Like imagine waking up at two in the morning to leave for four in the morning and there's cameras gonna be everywhere you are, there's gonna be all this stuff. If you could just get up, do your hair quickly and have your makeup done and have everything ready to go, I would do the same. I would do the same. Don't sleep in your makeup. Um, yeah. <laughs> That look, first of all, is beautiful. All those angles, all leaning into the same direction is stunning. That's a cute little hack. Here's the deal with preset shapes. They're not really for everyone. On my eye, because my eyelids are quite long and <laughs> flat, it will kind of be okay. But I feel like there's, there's better shapes for better eye shapes, if that makes sense. So I think it's so much nicer to be able to learn. Oh, to be able to learn what your eye shape is rather than, um, use a stencil, like a, what's it called? Eyelash curler. Especially if you have a rounded eye and then you're gonna use that, um, that, that long shape. When you move your eyebrows up and down, the shape isn't gonna quite look right. Um, but that looks amazing. It works on some people, it doesn't work on others. Why is there a big divide between the beauty content creator and the pro makeup artist? Stitch this, I wanna know what you think. So I've seen a, a lot of people reply to this and give some really good answers. Right, why is there a big divide between the beauty content creator and the pro makeup artist? And a lot of people are saying what's the difference in the comments for like, one has qualifications, one doesn't, one is for entertainment. But I'll tell you why there's a big divide, in my opinion. And this is from being an influencer and also having worked as a professional makeup artist as the influencer industry was coming into existence. And this is just personal opinion, and this isn't the only reason why. There are some valid reasons why makeup artists maybe don't take influencers as seriously. But one thing I have seen, and it tends to be from older makeup artists, is there's a bit of bitterness involved, right? Let me let me explain this. So when you're a makeup artist, before the internet world of social media existed, becoming a makeup artist was a difficult thing to do. There wasn't as much competition, but there was a quite a good quite a few people doing it. But but for me and for a lot of people that I knew, it involved a lot of working for free, working horrible hours, assisting, working your way up, and really trying to develop your craft and develop your artistry, understand things like lighting on set, understanding things like packing your kit and what to pack and what not to pack and customizing your kit so it was easier for you to move around and all this stuff. It involved things like learning what color light is gonna cancel out this color on the face, how you, how a bride's makeup is gonna work throughout the day. All this stuff you had to learn and educate yourself on as you went through the industry. And that could take years and years and years until you make it to the top and become this makeup artist where you're actually getting paid <laughs> to do work. You're doing shoots, you're doing things. You're you're requested to be on these these um, productions, you know? You don't just show up as, as an assistant. And I think because that is such a long, treacherous, um, process for a lot of us back in the day, now it is almost instant you can become a makeup artist, which a lot of people say they're a makeup artist in their bio and they're like very young and probably aren't a makeup yet artist yet or haven't gone through a school. And I think it's almost that, that earning that title of makeup artist as an older makeup artist and then seeing somebody who's a lot, lot younger than be like makeup artist and then they're doing things like crazy hacks and things like that. It kind of just in my opinion, belittles the term makeup artist for those people who have worked extremely hard to become one. Whether that's going to a school and getting a license or starting off yourself as a self-taught makeup artist and making your way to the top. So I do think that older makeup artists look at these younger people becoming makeup artists and quite famous with it as well as influencers and not actually doing things correctly, <laughs> you know? And I say that as just one example, that's absolutely not uh, for a lot of makeup artists, but that is one example I've seen from some older makeup artists. And I think actually was something I said goes for the majority of makeup artists is when content creators call themselves makeup artists and they're doing things that aren't actually technically right, it's like, that's not makeup artistry, that's 
playing with makeup or having a good time with makeup, which is also absolutely fine. But there has been times as well where the influencer world has kind of ruined <laughs> makeup artistry because people, you know, your clients will ask for dumb techniques to be done on their face because they've seen it work. Or they'll hold up a photoshopped picture of an influencer and say, I want to look like this. And it's like the influencer doesn't look like that. The makeup artist doesn't look like that. So it's a difficult world, I think, to be in. I feel like there's still a transition going on in the editorial makeup world almost and the online makeup world, which in my opinion are two different things that are both great by themselves. But I find it unfortunate when it, when somebody in the editorial world is being hired based on how many followers they are on Instagram because that is bullshit. There are extremely incredible, incredible iconic makeup artists that have less followers than me on Instagram and they are better makeup artists and more experienced and I would hope that somebody would hire them over me if I was to apply for it, which I wouldn't. But that's the way it should be. Does that make sense? I don't know. I think she's joking. I hope she's joking. Is she joking? I think that's a joke. And it, it's uh, also don't do it. Oh. <laughs> you could do it, to be fair. You could do it if you're just grooming your dog and don't cut your dog's hair out like outrageously. But <laughs> I guess you could try it. Try it. Let me know how you get on. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. As I mentioned before, you can tag me over on Instagram at robertwlsh, TikTok at robertwelshmua. Please like this video and consider subscribing and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.